Welcome to each of you, whether you're with us this morning in person or joining us online, thank you for joining us. It's our hope that as you've joined us today, that you feel the love of Jesus here at DCOG. All our ministries are happening today and moving forward. These ministries are available to each of you so that you can grow even deeper in your walk with Jesus and we can come along with you. We offer BLTs, Body Life Teams, for adults and kids before service at 9 a.m. We also provide nursery care for our babies that is available during the BLT hour and church. There are life groups for adults for you to join that meet throughout the week either at church or in their homes. Our Purpose Youth Group meet at 6.30 on Wednesday nights, so if you have any kids between the ages of 5th and 12th grade, we welcome them to join the fun. Now, one of our ushers should have given you a program that has info and activities going on here at DCOG. However, here are some things we would like for you to be aware of. Just a reminder to those either here in person or joining us on live stream, our 2021 tithing envelopes are available in the lobby as you leave today. If you are choosing to join us from home this morning, you may pick up your envelopes in the church office during the week. Also, remember, you may give on PushPay through their phone app or on our website, dcog.org. Thank you for your continued faithfulness to God and His church as we worship together through our giving. We will be having our Christmas Eve service at 6 p.m. This will be for one hour as we come together to worship that baby in the manger who is our Savior, Jesus. There will be no refreshments as previously advertised, just so you can get to your families for the remainder of the night, as well as being mindful of social distancing. Invite your friends and family to come and join you for one evening Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. We hope to see you and your family here. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. Although we may distance from each other physically, we now draw close together as we draw closer and worship Jesus, for He is our reason for gathering and deserves all our praise and glory and honor. come and go some are popular for a few days while others never really get a chance and of course repeating the same word in one context can mean something vastly different in another love is uh, love is one of those words love is a word you can also use to describe almost everything everything from the simple things such as food places or objects Love is really easy to talk about, and yet it's even easier to miss what it actually is. That's because love cannot be fully understood by explanation or description alone. But only through experience. Love has to be experienced. The Bible says that God is love. Love is not just something that God does. It's something he is. And because God is love, we need to go beyond learning facts about God and actually experience him for ourselves. We can experience God in prayer. We can experience God in worship. We can experience God in the scriptures. We can experience God while serving others. And through these experiences with God, we can catch a better look at what love really is. We love best when we love God most. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is our love. I 
heart the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mine God and sinners reconciled Joyful ye nations rise Join the triumph of our skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Heart the herald angels Glory! Glory to the newborn King Let's stand together, let's sing together Hail the heaven prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, praise with him in his
that word of prayer. King of heaven, we invite you into our presence today as we come into your presence. How we love you and we adore you and we worship you today. May we, may we worship from the bottom of our hearts to you who have given us all that life has to offer. Lord, we just want to, to celebrate the birth of your son who came to share with us your great love. Thank you for being here with us. Be glorified as we worship together, I pray. Amen. Folks, I just, uh, you may be seated, but I want to share a couple things with you. First of all, welcome to all of you who are online and have joined us. Uh, not all of you can be here with us, but uh, we know you are there and we, we are grateful that you have joined us together and, and uh, joined in our celebration and you're part of our church family. And uh, we also, I also want to say to all of you, welcome to this sanctuary. And as much as possible, please wear your mask. Uh, with this uptick in uh, the, the coronavirus, uh, we just need to be as, as uh, uh, guarded as we can. But let that not uh, destroy your enthusiasm and joy of worshiping together. And then I also want to say that, uh, you know, we have some exciting ministries going on, even with this COVID condition we're under, and uh, one of them uh, helps fund our ministries, and that is the um, script program that, uh, that we have going, and I know you're giving out gifts at Christmas time. You can find some great gift cards at the script counter, which is just inside the gathering, as you walk out of the sanctuary here today. And I encourage you to go and see what they have that uh, can meet just what you're wanting to give to somebody. And uh, as you do that, that money goes to help underwrite our youth program. And uh, we're so grateful for it. Uh, again, thank you all for being here. It's great to be in the house of the Lord and with you and with all of you online. Welcome. I'll follow with that too because Melissa gave it to me. You stop by the script, they're gonna have you fill something like this out. So they can order it ahead of time. They don't have all those script cards there that you might want for gifts. So stop by afterwards, pick that up, and allow them to get that. They need it uh, so they can get that for you by Christmas time. Okay, we're on the last week of this song, and you know, Paul said you got to be in the world, but not of the world. So that's where this song kind of came from. Wherever we go, whatever we do, the Lord is walking with you. He calls me, and it tempts me. Still it haunts me Still it haunts me But it leaves me Empty in the end Isn't that true? Come on The way is clear and true Come on in this running with the devil world, I'm going to walk with you. Come on, put your hands together. Come on. The road that's traveled. Let's stand. Come on. As it's battles. Come on. But there's no running with the devil I'm gonna walk with you come on there ain't no mountain too high or valley too low like a shadow I'll 
Be seated. I think Sandy Dandy is on her way. Those kids in here, can you come up here and greet Sandy Dandy? to see you all. <laughs> I've missed you. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Did you? Did Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, and you know what's coming next? I know. I absolutely love Christmas. So I'm wearing all this red. And if you look, my hat sparkles like snow. Do you see that? So I'm all ready for Christmas. I'm just getting ready because I look forward to it so much. And I get to see you but, uh, this time, and I probably won't see you before Christmas. So I wish you a Merry Christmas now, okay? <laughs> hey, I thought we'd look at all, all we've talked about and learned and just kind of remember what all we learned, okay? We learned to love God, didn't we? And you know what it says, love God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your mind. That means love him with everything you got, okay? All right, and how many of you are going to do that? Yay, kids, I love you all. <laughs> and then we learned that not only love God, we have, he wants us to love our neighbor as ourself, Okay, even that grouchy old person down the road, we have, God says, I want you to love him. And I, I don't want to make God unhappy with me, so I'm going to love the grouchy man down there. And you know what all I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to pray for him. Uh, I, because I don't think it, he can do it on his own. I think God needs help to make him not be so grouchy. But I'm going to pray for him. So if you've got somebody in your life that's just kind of grouchy, icky, okay, pray for them and say, God, help them to be nice. Help them to behave themselves. Okay, and we also remember when we sang that song, uh, Let Your Light Shine, and not, we're not going to sing it though. <laughs> and hide it under a bushel. Don't hide Hide it. Don't hide it under a bushel. And, and, you know, I was thinking about that, and I wondered if you thought, um, well, how do we let our light shine? And what light is this talking about? And I thought I could just see you kids doing this. Okay. I'm going to have the light shine, you know, try real hard on your own to let the light shine. Well, that's not what it means. You know that? That's not what it means. And I brought a flashlight to help us know what it means to let our light shine. Okay? I'll get this. It's a brand new flashlight. I like it a lot. Steve will probably get it for Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him though, okay? All right. Oh, he's watching this, so he may know. <laughs> okay, I need somebody that will come up and turn on a flashlight. Would you come up? Because this one's kind of hard to push. And uh, I want you to pretend like you're the flashlight, okay? You're the flashlight. And you got to let your light shine, all right? Now, you turn it on and show, show us the light. It, it doesn't work. Well, I did everything I thought I knew. You are so right, fella. They're in my hand. Okay, uh, you want to hold this and not play with it. And, that's, uh, and I'm going to put the batteries in. And, and this, okay, you know what the batteries represent? 
is God's power and love in your heart. When you invite Jesus into your heart, he comes in with all kinds of love, and he also gives you power to do things that you need to do. Did you know that? You're the flashlight, but he, he gives us the power to love one another and all kinds of things. Well, let's see if the power works. Remember, it's Jesus. Okay, I'll hold that, and I'll stick this in here. I hate this new flashlight. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now, would you see if that light shines? Yes! Shine it around. Shine it up or you'll blind them. Okay. <laughs> now, all of you, do you see the light? You don't see the light? Ah! Oh. Oh, look, see if it goes up there. It goes wherever you, it goes wherever God wants it to go, you know? So that's what it means is that we, oh, I'm sorry. I said, don't shine in their eyes. <laughs> I didn't. Mama, I didn't shine it in. He said, you can sit down, honey. So I want you to remember, you're the flashlight. But when God says, uh, uh, let your light shine, he's talking about the light that he gives you the power to have. And I want to talk to you. I found some scripture that explains it more. And I absolutely love it. <clears throat> in uh, John 12, it says... I have come as a light to shine in the darkness. You know who's talking? Who do you think? I have come as the light to shine in the darkness. Yes, that's Jesus. Jesus was saying, he's the light. <clears throat> okay, he's the light. Well, okay, and he says, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in darkness. Okay, darkness must be a bad thing, huh? Because Jesus came to get rid of darkness. Okay, what could darkness be? A shadow on your wall when you're... Scary things are, are like darkness, aren't they? Good job. Good thinking. Okay, what do you think darkness is? It's like we're in a cave and, and God is the flashlight. Guiding us. Oh, he's guiding us. Well, not only is he guiding us in a, in a cave, he... he light, it, he's the light. So he's showing us the way to live our life and what it will be best and how we'll be happiest and how uh, to have good friends and do all kinds of things. Did, okay, did one of you want to say what darkness was or did somebody use, what, what's darkness? He, he doesn't remember. Do, do you have something to say okay all right they go ahead leave me alone okay <laughs> well it said Jesus says I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so th now who and this is who he's shining on so that all who put their trust in me Jesus will no longer remain in darkness and darkness is more than just a cave you know, when Jesus says to obey the Ten Commandments and to love him, there's people that don't love God. They just don't want anything to do with him, and they don't know what they're missing, okay? I remember a time I was so lonely, and God helped me see, Sandy, I'm with you all the time because I love you. So the darkness is trying to live in a world where there's meanness going on, people that not obeying the Ten Commandments. There's meanness and there's just stealing and there's hurting. There's bullies all around. What? I think you said it right. What? Countless things, Countless things that are not nice. Yeah, that you don't even want to be around. But Jesus wants you to be around. He wants you to, to, 
he wants to, this is what he wants next. And I cannot believe it. It's so wonderful. So those that trust him, he's going to uh, help us. And it says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts. His light. He made shine in our hearts. And when we accept Jesus as our Savior, he comes in and lives in our heart. Did you know that? So he says, I want them to experience what it's like to, to live in the light that God provides. And it's not just light, but it's live the good life where there, you don't have to be afraid of everything. And, and people love you and take good care of you. And it said, so let me read it again. Uh, that God has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God. And so, we have this light shining in our hearts. And we aren't the strong ones. We don't have to go like this to make the light comes out. As you're learning what, who God is and how much he loves you, and uh, what, he, what he loves, as you're growing as a Christian, when you invite Jesus in your heart, uh, then you try to figure out what God loves, and you go, I bet I'm supposed to love that too, or what he's seeing. See, the light helps us to see what God is seeing, and he helps us see that, and I go, well, I never saw that before. I, I, I never saw that I was not alone, because we don't see Jesus, but that is wonderful. I'm never alone. God is always with me and guiding me. Somebody, one of you said guiding. So I'm is real excited about us be part, us being part of the light. And when somebody sees that we have a better life going on, it's not all about darkness and scary and hurtful things. Okay, that we're living a life where we're the people are kind and loving, and if they're hurting, people go to help. That's people living in the light, and they see what God would do, and then they do it. You know that? So, I wanted to give you an early Christmas present, okay? Now, you've got things to give, too, and I'm glad... I'm so excited about that, but this one's from Sandy Dandy, okay? All right, don't tell anybody, all right? What I got here is a whole box. It's like this, as they're given. See this? There is a little flashlight in it. I'll show you what it's like. Okay, here it is. Look at this little flashlight. Isn't that adorable? I'm giving this to you because I want you to take it home and say, I'm the flashlight. And then there, there's a bunch of batteries in it, okay? And, rem and you go, well, God is the, he's the batteries. He's the strength. We, we don't have to, well, I'm going to give it to you in a minute, okay? <laughs> We can't wait. This is supposed to, all right, this represents you and God in you who's given you strength to live like he wants you to live and love like he wants you to love, okay? So, now, you're going to get one of these packages, and I made it real tight so you can't get in it <laughs> because it's got batteries in it. So, I want, when you go back to your seats, give, give it to your uh, mama, dad, or your grandpa and grandma because you're going to go to children's ministry soon. And we don't want you playing with your flashlight. They got things that they want to do. But I do want you to have this to remember that you're the flashlight. God is the power that helps you to be the kind of person he wants you to be. And to love people and to help people. So you remember, you don't have to go, ah, I'm going to try real hard to have light. He gives you light. And you and you show it to others too. They see that you're living a different life. You want to help me? <laughs> okay. Now, as the children go back to their, go, oh, there's one. Sorry, well, I'll get it. Okay. I wouldn't be able to probably. <laughs> you can each. You want one, or you want to tell me something? 
Do I have my Christmas tree up? I sure do. I do. Do you? Do you? Okay, kids, you can play with it when your mom or dad or your grandpa and grandma says. But you can go uh, to them, to there, and you. Merry Christmas, and I love you, kids. Live in the light. To the cross I look. To the cross I cling Of its suffering I do drink Of its work I do sing On it my Savior Oh bruised and crushed Show the God is love God is just At the cross you beckon me Draw me gently to my knees And I am lost for words So lost in love I'm sweetly Undeserving life Have I been given Through Christ crucified You call me out of death Call me into life I was under your wrath I'm reconciled At the cross you Let in me Draw me gently To my knees And I am Lost for words So lost in love I'm sweetly broken Oh 
the first Sunday of each month, we share in Holy Communion, and those of you who are at home watching us, uh, sharing with us online, uh, welcome you to get some juice and uh, bread and share with us as we share together in the Lord's Supper. It's essential for us to understand that Jesus came to die to pay the sacrifice for uh, our sins. And such a sacrifice had to be human. It had to be in flesh. For sin came from humanity. Such a sacrifice had to be divine as well. For only God could meet the standard of complete righteous perfection required of such a sacrifice. Jesus was both human and divine. And on that last night, with his disciples in the upper room, he gathered with them and he said these words, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took the bread, he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us do that together now. In like manner, Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Take and drink. And so do we. Let us pray. We remember you, Father, and the great gift that you have given to us. And we remember you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior and King, who came to earth to tell us about the great love of our Father in heaven, and who also paid the price for our sins, that which we could not do on our own, you did for us through your sinless body, through your life, through your death on the cross and your resurrection, giving us new life and hope for eternity. And we remember you this day for your supreme sacrifice, your gift of love that has given new life to all of us. And we give you our thanks and praise. We are honored to be here together in your presence. As we remember you and all that you have done for us, we submit ourselves to you that we might be uh, the children of God that you have desired us to be. We pray that as we share together in the ministry of this church, you can use us for your glory to reach out into a dark world that needs to know the light of Christ. Oh, Father, lead and guide us through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen us and guide us that we might be used of you to reach into this dark world with the glorious news of your love and your redemption that you give to all. And Father, we pray that you'll be with those in our church. Lord, there are many needs, many needs among us, and you have faithfully 
been there for each of us and according to each of these needs. And this week, as we have prayed for some very important needs, Lord, you've been there. You have sustained those who stand in the need of healing, of encouragement, of uh, financial renewal. Lord, you've been there for them. And we continue to pray for each of these. We commit, continue to, to, con, to commit our lives to you and this church and the ministry you've given to us. And we pray that you will guide us, that we might accomplish that which needs to be done in your kingdom. For each who has been so faithful in their giving, we thank you for them. For those who are giving, perhaps even for the first time, I pray they will sense the blessing and the joy of giving, for that's what this season is all about, the joy of giving. As we share together in this joy and in this mission, in our intercessory prayers for one another, we want to thank you because you are there with us in all these things. And for that, and for your supreme sacrifice, we give you our thanks and our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you fear the world is broken? Feel the shadows deepen. We do. Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation grown and sick? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind? ourselves of this. Oh uh-huh. 
Thank you, worship team, for leading us so beautifully this morning in our worship. Don't you just love Christmas time? Hello? <laughs> Boy, I love Christmas. Like I said last week, I uh, start playing Christmas music uh, in August. It takes me uh, that time to, to kind of get all in the mood and spirit to prepare for the messages for uh, Advent, and uh, there's just something special about the Christmas music, but you know what? There's something really special about Christmas lights, too. I love the lights of the season. I think we have some pictures here of uh, some lights that I've come up with. This is uh, right across the street from my house, and... Uh, uh, I think his name is Clark Griswold. No, not. I'm, no, he's uh, my neighbor. Uh, has a beautiful display there. You'll need to go up Stratton Way, and then on down. Uh, yeah, and then on down the street is this beautiful display uh, right uh, next door to uh, Barb Fox, and uh, it's a glorious uh, uh, picture and and manger scene. And I think we have one more here. Oh, looky there. Uh, the old snowman. We're, so we're, my daughter is coming up from uh, South Carolina uh, for Christmas with her family, and she's asked that after they get here, she'd like to have 6 to 12 inches of snow, okay? So if we get it, um, no, when we get it, uh, just uh, know that it was her request and my prayers. So any, is that all we have? I think that's all we have. But I love, oh, look at the starlights. The best Christmas display ever is up in the heavens above. And I love it. I love the Christmas lights. And uh, it reminds me of the passage that I'm sharing with you today. I'm sharing a series of sermons for Advent on uh, the symbols of Christmas. And, and the Bible gives us several, a number, and I don't have time to get to all of them, but but it gives us a number of symbols for who Jesus is and what he came to do. And uh, last week we looked at Emmanuel, the name of Jesus. It means God is with us, and he's been with us all through the last week. He's with us all the time. There's no place you can go that he is not there. And today we're looking at Jesus as the light of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says this to the people. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of of life. Now, let me give you the background of this passage because it's incredible what's going on here. It's one that you can identify with today. This was at the Feast of the Tabernacles, or uh, often called also as Feast of the Booths, that was one of three major celebrations a year uh, that the Jewish people held in Jerusalem. And this particular feast was their Thanksgiving feast. We just shared Thanksgiving. 
It has ushered in this time of celebration of our Lord's birth, the Advent. I love this season. Well, they were celebrating their harvest festival. That's what the tabernacle uh, feast was all about. Celebrating the great harvest that God had given to them. And also, as they celebrated this great harvest, they celebrated uh, uh, the, uh, with commemoration of what God had brought them through. Isn't that what we do? Thanksgiving and Christmas, we remember not only of uh, uh, the great uh, celebration of our, of our harvest, but we think about all those things over the last year God has done for us and how he has brought us through so many trials and struggles, and he has also blessed us beyond what we could think. So we can identify with this passage, Jesus was at the festival of booths, and one of the things they did was uh, they, they would have uh, these great celebrations during the day, and then at night, they would light up luminaries all over the city of Jerusalem, and it would just glow into the heavens. You could see it for miles around as they lit up and and the lights just lit up the glory of God from the holy city. The lights. And as they were celebrating, one day Jesus talked about these lights. Something they could understand. A symbol they understood so well. And he says these words, I am the light of the world. He's standing in the second area of the temple, of the the temple mount. And the first was for the Gentiles. The Gentiles could go this far into the temple, but not any farther. And then the next section was the temple, temple area that ladies, women could go into along with the men. But then there is a third area that the ladies could not go into, and, and uh, it was for the, the men and the scribes and the priests and chiefs and all. Jesus is standing in this middle section of the temple. Crowded people all around. And they're celebrating this feast of the of the booths, and they're celebrating their harvest time, and celebrating uh, all the ways in which God had been with them as a people. And he says to them, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. And he got their attention. You could probably hear a coin drop. And all the Pharisees who were standing around all at once looked at him, no doubt, and wondered why he was proclaiming such. For that was a very messianic message that he was giving to the crowd. And they challenged him. And and as they debated back and forth, Jesus responded to them. And when they had been put down, Jesus said to them, if you hold, he's speaking to the crowds again. You know, the the debate's over now. He's he's, uh, jockeyed with these Pharisees right in front of the, uh, the whole audience. And now the debate ends, and he looks around at the people in the courtyard, and he says these words, if you hold To my teaching, you really are my disciple. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let me paraphrase that. If you really want to be my disciple, hold to my teachings. And when you do, you will know the truth that sets you free from whatever binds you. What is it binding you in this season of hope? What is it that has a hold of you that if you'll just trust 
Jesus, he will set you free. That's the message of Christmas. Jesus is the light of the world. And you follow that light and he can lead you through the darkness of your world into a new life that is victorious and that can get through no matter what the problem is, he'll get you through it. You're not alone. Emmanuel, God is with us. There's power in that light. There's power in being a disciple of Christ. There is power in knowing that you're not alone. There is power to overcome whatever may come your way. And that's what the light of the world came to share with us. Let's look at that light. That light replaces life's chaos with order. That light restores truth and gives guidance. And that light is reflected in us through the glory of God. Let's look at that. That light, Jesus Christ living in us, replaces life's chaos with order. Whatever chaos you're going through right now, he can replace that. If you'll give it all to him and trust him and walk according to his guidance that he gives to you. Light has always been, throughout the Bible, light has always been uh, a symbol of direction and hope. It has been a symbol of separating the darkness, of giving uh, enlightenment to the confusion of our world. Even in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, we read where God was creating the world and it was void and it was dark. And then God said, let there be light. And light came into the world and it separated the darkness from the light. And it gave illumination to the creation that God was putting together. And God looked at it and he said, that's good. The Hebrew meaning in that passage of Genesis is this. The light pushes against the darkness and the darkness cannot hold it back. That's what Jesus meant when he said, and it's recorded in John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Can't hold it back. Reminds me of the time I was out fishing years ago on a reservoir. We'd fished all night. And I was about ready to fall asleep, but I knew it was just, just a matter of 10, 15 minutes before dawn would arise. And uh, so I fought off the sleep, uh, sleepiness, and I just sat there on that pontoon boat, looking up into the sky and off into the east. Gradually, the darkness began to be pushed away. And I, I could see the very beginning of daylight coming and it was just welling up in my soul. That's the image we have in this passage. When Jesus says, the darkness cannot overcome it. It can't hold it back. And then daylight came. That's the image that we have of the light of the world. The world cannot hold it back and there's a lot of going on these days to hold back the light of Christ but you and I as as a body a body of believers we can push back that darkness through our lives what kind of chaos or darkness are you living in Jesus who is the light of the world is saying to you today I can help you Follow me and the darkness will be overcome 
but you must be my true disciple. Cannot be nominal about it. You must be totally surrendered if you're going to discover the power, the energy that God gives you through his son and through his Holy Spirit. When I was teaching in Africa, one of my students at our seminary had grown up as a Muslim in Tanzania. He's just a young man, but he became deathly ill. And as he became deathly ill, he called for the medicine men of the village to come and and do their, their thing with him. But he continued to get worse, and he called for the imams to come to help him uh, get well, and they could do nothing. And finally, in desperation, he cries out and he says, go down to that church down the road and bring that pastor here and see if he can pray for my healing. And they went, it was a church of God congregation, went and got that pastor. He came down and he prayed for that young man and he got well. And that young man gave his life to the Lord. He started helping and working in the church, and then they sent him to our school in Kenya where he studied to be a pastor. Today, he is pastoring in Tanzania because the light of the world broke through his darkness, entered into the chaos of his life, put it in order, and he could see the truth that could set him free. That's what the light of the world does. It replaces chaos with order. It also restores truth and gives guidance. Ever since the beginning of time, as man has walked on earth and has noticed the patterns of the sky, the stars in the sky, like we saw earlier. Oh, they're still there. The stars in the sky and the constellations. You read about these constellations all through the Old Testament because they were recognized as order and they gave direction for those who were on journey. That's what the light does for us. It gives us direction. John 1, 9 says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And it restores the truth when we're talking about darkness of sin and and a world of sin. It's this light that gives the truth. And that was the mission upon which Christ uh, uh, sojourned and was, was fulfilling here on earth. He came to restore truth back into God's creation. The reason for this season, the reason he came is to remind us who he is. He brought all of this life into existence. He is, he was part of creation. It reminds us what his purpose was. It was to save us from our sins. It reminds us how we are to function as believers in Christ. He is our example. We are to follow him. Holiness is living the kind of life that he has called us to live. It reminds us why we should live for him because there's a world of darkness out there and he wants us to reach into this world of darkness and bring people into the light so that they can find the truth that can set them free. He is that truth. He dispels the darkness of myths and, and uh, uh, faulty, uh, cultish faith. He dispels the philosophies that, that have no foundation. He dispels the lies. He dispels the, the, uh, the absence of truth. 
Jesus Christ is the truth that sets us free. He guides us through the chaos of life. He gives us blessing upon blessing when we follow him in our lives. John 1.16 tells us that, that of his goodness, we have all received grace upon grace upon grace Upon grace. And I love that verse because in the original language, it's a continual action. In the Greek language, as you read the words, you know it's not talking about he gave us grace one time. But he gives us grace constantly. Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. That's blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing. That's what Jesus Christ does for us. That's the truth that sets us free. Grace upon grace. He restores truth and he guides us in that truth if we walk according to his word. And when we do, just like Christ, we reflect the glory of God. Jesus is the ultimate reflection of God, our Heavenly Father. Remember what we said a week or so ago? When, ta- when uh, Philip, the disciple, said in the upper room, Jesus, show us the Father and we can believe. And he said, Philip, I've been with you for more than three years and you're asking me to show you the Father? I am the truth. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Can you grab that and hold on to it? Look to Jesus. Read the New Testament. Understand it well, especially the four Gospels, so that you can understand who Jesus is. And you line up your light according to the light he has given to you. And you become the person he's called you to be. Jesus is the exact representation of God here on earth. Colossians 1 tells us, if you've seen Christ, if you know Jesus, you know the Father. And as his followers, Jesus tells us we are to reflect that glory, just as Christ came to earth to tell us about God's great love, just as he came to tell us what God wanted for us, we are to tell that story Ourselves, And we are to live in such a way to reflect the glory of God. Jesus said to his disciples and to all those listening that one day as he was feeding the 5,000. He said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. You need a purpose for living? There it is. The light of the world gives his light to us, and he tells us to let his light shine in us and through us before others. And as others see the glory of God working, living, and dwelling in us, they will glorify their Father in heaven as well. Another one of my students was Peter Amuya, a Ugandan. He was a Christian young man living in, U- in Uganda, feeling a call to ministry, but not, uh, hadn't gone to seminary yet, but feeling that call. And one day he and two of his partners, friends, were walking through the streets of their community. It was in a troubled time. It was in a war-like time. And people were uh, being uh, mercilessly treated and even killed because of different warring factions. And one warring faction met Peter and his two friends and uh, uh, they all went to church together. And these these uh, men had guns with them, and they said, okay, we want to know where you stand. 
And uh, if you're Christian, we're going to shoot you. If you're not, you tell us. His two friends then said, we're not Christians. We're not Christians. And Peter said, I am. Jesus is my Lord. They cocked their guns and they shot his two friends. He looked at them in, dis- in surprise, and they said, we want only true believers. And these men we can't trust because they're willing to walk away from what they say is the truth. And they let him go. His light was shining at the darkest moment, and he went on to our school and became a uh, train for the ministry where now today in Uganda, in his home village, he is a pastor. He's also a regional political leader in his community. Blessing upon blessing, opportunity upon opportunity, God will give us as we surrender to the light of the world. I don't know what kind of chaos you're going through, But you surrender. If you're truly his disciple, you surrender and you follow his teachings. You live the kind of life he's called you to live. And there is no end to what he can do in you as his light shines through you. How bright is your light? Need change batteries today? Maybe you need to say, Lord, I need to be recharged. I need you to do in me what I cannot do myself, and I surrender all. Go share the light and light up your world. Father, we thank you for sending your son who has illuminated the life around us. And in this dark world, there is light, there is hope, there is direction, because through him, we find it. And I pray for everyone here today, those listening online, that if there's chaos in their lives, they will turn to you, and they will let you to to lead them through this chaos, Put it in order and become the people you know they can become. We surrender all, Lord, that we might be all for you wherever we go. And make our light shine in this dark world. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. a care in every soul some brightly burning some dark and cold there is a spirit who brings a fire ignites a candle makes his own
inspired to go to that dark world thank you so much for joining us today here in person or or on live stream and and we just want to encourage you through this week to be that light in the midst of the darkness and don't hide it under a bushel let it shine again we want to remind you as you leave today stop by the script and pick up a sheet there and make your order to them we appreciate those ladies doing so much as they uh they, they do a lot uh, to support our youth missions and where they go and what they do. So, uh, Father, thank you so much for allowing us to worship you today. What a privilege it is to worship the light of the world, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your words today. And we give you all the praise and all God's people said, amen. We'll see you next Sunday. It's bad.